Boys and girls, allow me to introduce you to the artist James Rizzi. James Rizzi is a pop artist who spent most of his life living in New York City, a city that was a favorite to him, and he loved to portray it. Not only did he paint images of New York City, but he also had the chance to actually paint buildings. He has a very distinct style or a specific way of creating art that when you see it, you recognize it immediately. We are going to focus on James Rizzi's portraits or paintings of birds. We are going to be creating our own James Rizzi inspired birds. So be thinking about how many birds you might want to have in your composition and what those birds might be doing. And let's get started. Boys and girls, today we're going to learn how to paint something called a gradation. A gradation is when a color goes from light to medium to dark gradually. We are going to make a monochromatic gradation, meaning our gradation will only have one color. In our case, we are making a gradation of blue. We will go from light blue by mixing blue with white to dark blue by mixing blue with black. When you mix a color with white, it is called a tint. When you mix a color with black, it is called a shade. And when you have a variety of colors, or I'm sorry, variety of one color, that is called value. So let's get started on our gradation. The first thing you're going to need to do is fold your paper in half. And this is just for you. So as you're painting, you'll know what part of your paper will be painted light to medium to dark. So imagine it like this. When you're painting on the left-hand side of your paper, this will be the light side, the tint, where you'll use white. This will be starting to become the dark side where you will use black to create a shade. So I want to start with very light blue working gradually to dark. So for that, I will start with white. So I've got my white paint on my brush, and what I'm going to do is paint up and down, and I know you're not seeing anything because, hello, it's camouflaged, but I'm adding quite a bit of white paint to my paper using an up and down brush stroke, and I think it's a little easier to paint standing up. Now, I am not using water to clean my brush today. I'm just going to wipe my paintbrush on my messy mat like this. Clean enough for me. As long as when I sweep it, I don't see a lot of paint coming off my brush, that works for me. Now, what I want to do is start to change it to a very, very light blue. And when I'm looking at the two blues, I have turquoise and I have indigo or dark blue. I'm going to go with the lighter of the two, which is that one. So I'm just going to get a very small amount because I only want this to be light blue. So notice I have very little paint on my brush and I'm just going to sweep that up and down until I have a tint or a light blue. Now, if my paintbrush won't move, I need more paint. It lost its viscosity or its ability to move. So I don't want to get more blue because I want to keep this light. So to give it a little bit more viscosity or the ability to move, I am just adding some white. All right, so now I have this beautiful light blue or a tint of blue. My goal now is to make it go a little darker. So for that, again, I want to add white first because it is a tint on this side of my paper. But I do want it to be getting darker gradually. And right now it actually is going from light to lighter. So I want to have the opposite effect. Clean my brush. And this time when I get my turquoise, I got a little bit more on my brush. Let's see if that will make it a little darker. So already I can see I have a darker value. It's the same color, it's just a little bit darker, and that is what value is, the lightness and darkness of a color. You'll notice my paper is being super cooperative. I'm just gonna hold it at the top. Now what I don't like is that I've got a stripe there. So if you notice you have a stripe, put your paintbrush, half of it on the light side, half of it on the dark side, sweep it back and forth, and that will help to blend the two colors in. Already I can see that I've gone from light blue to a slightly darker blue. So now I'm gonna add just less white and now more blue. Now that I have that gradation done, where I have gone from light 
to medium to now straight turquoise, gradually creating a gradation that's monochromatic, one color. I'm now ready to go to the dark side. So for that, I'm going to clean off my brush on my messy mat and I'm switching just to blue, but not much blue because I'm going to blend it with the turquoise to make it a little bit lighter. And I got quite a bit of turquoise on my brush. And that makes a beautiful turquoise blue. Sometimes you'll hear people say a color like turquoise blue. Whatever word they say first, for example, I said turquoise, that's the color that there's more of in the combination. So right now, this is turquoise blue. So let's see if I can make a little bit darker. I'm going to clean my brush. This time, I'm going to use more blue and less turquoise. So that would be called bluish turquoise or blue turquoise, I suppose you could call it. And I'm just going up and down, sweeping my brush back and forth. It's considered monochromatic because I'm using one color, baby, color. Mono means one, chromatic means color. Now I'm ready to start going a little darker. So for that, I will start adding small amounts of black. The reason I say All right, now the fun begins. Before you start working on your James Rizzy inspired lovebirds for Valentine's Day, you got to stop and think about the format of your composition. Format means what direction you want your work of art to go in. For example, this masterpiece created by yours truly, that would be me, is going horizontally. That's the format that I chose because I wanted to emphasize two large birds that were facing each other. However, you might want to go a different route. Maybe you want more birds. Maybe you want your work of art to be done or created vertically. That's totally up to you. If you do make your work of art vertically, think about how you might place things in your work of art. That is called compositions. You'll have to stop and think about how you want to arrange those things in your work of art to create an interesting composition. Uh, notice on both of these, the birds are not small. They take up a large amount of space because I wanted them to stand out. I wanted to emphasize them. If I had made them very small and had a large amount of blank area in the background, then the emphasis would be on the background, and that probably wouldn't be a very interesting work of art. So as you're creating your birds, and deciding on your composition, you need to stop, think, and draw big. So let's talk about how to do that. So I have my paper that I created last time, and that's my beautiful gradation, and now I'm going to work on my birds. When you're working on your birds today, you're going to be using some painted paper, paper that you've created before, or you can always borrow some from me. We have plenty of now that I have the circle for the eye, I'm going to go ahead and use black. And I'm going to outline that. And it's a little tricky because my paper does have that texture, but I can do it. And I want to think about what direction I want my bird looking. I think I want it looking at the other bird. And maybe I'll put a little highlight in the eye too. So I drew a circle, added a smaller circle for the highlight, and now I'm going to color that in. If you want to... Uh, Rizzy's birds are always very fun and very silly, so if you want to go that route and add something fun and silly like eyelashes to your birds, go for it. You are the artist. You can decide what you want your bird to look like. Now, since this is oil pastels, you know sometimes if you wipe them, they can smear. So if you see oil pastel crumbs, the best thing to do is just blow them off. Now what I'm going to do is start to draw the bird's body. But because I'm drawing with oil pastels and I can't erase, that could be a little bit of a problem if I draw something I'm not happy with. So for this next step, I'm just going to do a little bit of practice drawing with my finger. I know I want the bird's head to be an arched or a curved line that goes around the eye. So after drawing that a couple of times, I'll go ahead 
and draw that with my oil pastel. And I like my lines to be nice and dark. And then I want the tail to come down and swoosh up. Do I want it to go out? Do I want it to come up like the letter U? So draw it a couple of times with your finger and that'll really help you decide what kind of shape you want to go with. Maybe this one will come out quite a bit and I'm drawing my bird nice and big because I want it to fill up my page and be the emphasis in my artwork. Now the beak. I could do a beak where it looks like it's closed. So I'm just drawing like a sideways V or an angled line. Or I could do two and it looks like the bird's talking, which I really want to do. So I think I will go with that route. So after drawing with my finger, I know to go out, come back in. There's one angle line for the beak. And maybe I'll do another one just like that. Now, if you draw something you're not happy with, as an artist, you need to think about how you can change that into a beautiful oops. Now that I've got this part done, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the bottom of the body. So I've got plenty of room. I'm going to draw a line that connects. So if I draw that line really close together, it's going to be a very skinny bird. And if I draw really far down, well, the problem with that would be I might not have room for feet. So draw with your finger a couple of times. It always helps to visualize a little bit. And I'm bringing it back over there. Cool. Now I want to add a couple of more details to my bird. <laughs> You'll be using a white and black oil pastel and you'll be needing to draw pretty big, keeping in mind that you want these birds to stand out against your gradation background. You want to emphasize them, not the background. So instead of drawing just one eye like you did with the profile drawing, you're going to draw two. I know it's difficult to see, but that's exactly why we have our black oil pastel and that will help emphasize those eyes. A lot of times when artists want to emphasize something or make it stand out, they will also trace it, which is what I'm doing right now. Now, the cool thing is, is if you're making a bunch of birds, you can have them looking in all sorts of different directions, maybe at each other, maybe straight ahead like this kooky bird. And if you want to, once again, it's totally up to you since you're the artist. Think about what kind of expression you want your bird to have. So this one to me looks a little bit surprised. My next step is to work on that beak. And this this time, because you're looking at the bird from the front, this direction that the beak is going is different. So instead of being a sideways V, it's now a V pointed down. And I could also add some little nostrils for the bird's beak. I'm just emphasizing my line more. Now I want to create the shape of the head. So I'm going to practice that with my finger so I understand exactly how to go about doing that. So I'm just tracing it with my finger. And then I'm going to draw around the eyes and coming back to the other V. There we go. So now I've got that. And if I want to emphasize it a little bit, just color it in. And it, while you're working, it always helps to remember not to wipe your paper because you don't want that oil pastel to smear. Next comes the body. So I'm going to draw a couple of lines coming straight down and then I need to decide what direction I want the body to be facing. So the body is very similar to the other one you drew. So maybe I will start with this side thinking like we did before on how to make that body. I think I'll make it like a curved line like a U. Emphasizing it. And now I'll make another one. And if your oil pastel breaks, that's okay. I'm starting over here and connecting, or it might be easier to start there and go back, but draw with your finger first. You don't want to end up with a really skinny bird. So I'm going to start here 
Making my lines nice and big. Awesome. I'm really When you start to cut out your birds, just a quick note, you'll want to cut on the outside of your black line because you want that black line to still be there to help, you guessed it, emphasize that bird. So as you cut, make sure your cutting hand is always facing forward and make sure your extra hand is always doing all the work of rotating the paper. When you come to a place that's a little bit tricky to cut, it always helps to slow down, and I'm trying my best to stay on the outside of that black line. Now that I have all my pieces cut out, I can decide on my composition. So I've made a lot of different kinds of birds, but I probably won't use them all in one picture. But I do want to talk to you about how to decide on your composition. This might be a fun composition for one work of art, but watch how your artwork can change by just moving a couple of things around. Suddenly my birds look like they're looking down at something. What if I rotate my paper so it is a vertical what can my birds be doing now? So before you start gluing any kind of artwork, it always helps to play with the placement of things and decide on your composition. I kind of like that composition because it looks like they are looking at each other and talking. If you did the birds where they are front view, and I did three, then I can do kind of like a family of birds for my composition. So I could, there's my little baby bird, so cute. And maybe this guy's looking up at the baby bird. I ended up making all my birds' bodies going in the same direction. It probably would have been more interesting had I had one going in the opposite direction. But this is what I've got. What would it look like if I rotated it? So let's just play around with that composition. So be thinking about all of the different things you can do. And once you've decided on your composition, I think I know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to have this and that. So it looks like they're looking at one another. Once you've figured it out, then you know it's time to go ahead and glue. And when you glue, please make sure you put glue only around the edges. So I've got my trusty glue cup and my glue brush, and I'm just putting glue around the edges. Now let's talk about how you can add more things to your work of art than just these two things. If you add more to your work of art, then people who are looking at your work of art will spend more time looking at it because they'll be looking at all of the different interesting elements in your artwork. So I'm going to cut out a couple of hearts since this is supposed to be a love bird painting. So I've got some paper that I thought would be a nice contrast to these guys, folding it in half. If you are going to draw a heart, that's fine. You can draw it, making sure to always draw on the fold, or you can just go for it and cut it out. I mean, come on now. We could probably handle that scandal. Let's see how that goes. Cake. So now I'm just going to think about the composition and placement of the different hearts that I plan to cut out. Every chickadee, every little bird in the tall oak tree, the wise old owl, the big black crow, Clap of their wings, sing and go, bird, go, rock and robin. Sweet, sweet, rock, 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 rock and robin. Sweet, sweet, go, rock and robin, cause we're really gonna rock tonight. All right, friends, for my final, final thing, I'm just going to emphasize those birds and give them some legs. And this time I'm using a very small brush and some watery black paint. So I stirred my paint up gently so it's not to splatter on my paper, thinking about what I want my birds' legs to be doing. 
You could always, of course, sketch it out first, but I'm just going to go for it. I was thinking about it in my mind. I had a lot of space up here, so I want to think about how I can fill that space a little bit, and that was why I made the bird's legs a little long. I want it to look like this bird is like flying over to the other one to spread the lerve. There we go. And if I want to emphasize my bird a little bit more, I'm just going to very carefully because I don't want to make it turn out too dark around the edges. I want to emphasize that just a little more. So I might outline it a little bit with black. If you want to emphasize some of those hearts, I'm going to go ahead and draw a smaller heart on the inside. You don't have to do that. That's just something I wanted to do to emphasize some of the hearts in the artwork. If there's anything else you want to add, like a moon stars or a sun to your background, you can just add it by adding your cut pieces of paper. All right, now this guy, maybe since I don't have a lot of room, I need to think about what I can do. So maybe this bird is sitting down. So just because you don't have things exactly how you want them to be. You gotta go with it. That one, I would have liked to have, have him standing, but you know what? I think it works out perfectly that he's sitting down. You gotta make it work, turn it into a beautiful oops. Now, I think my masterpiece is complete. Now I get to decide just what I'll do with this fun bird family. I can't wait to see how you decide on your composition and the placement of your birds in your Rizzy-inspired masterpiece. Let's get started. 